I recently started a project to replace my existing landscape lighting or accent lighting around the house. Uh, this pile of uh, parts and wire is uh, some of what I took out of the yard. Uh, I found this stuff to be unreliable and uh, with all the wire running around in the bushes, uh, getting wet and getting hacked at by the uh, people working on the, uh, the bushes, uh, it, it just wasn't a good solution. So I set some objectives for the, uh, the new project and those were to try to simplify the whole uh, system and hopefully improve the reliability and also uh, get less maintenance. Uh, it took a lot of maintenance to keep these incandescent lights running. And as a side benefit, I would hope to get lower cost of operation out of it because I planned on using uh, LEDs in the process. Uh, I found that my LED design that I, I wound up using only uses about 4 watts of power compared to 120 watts for incandescent bulbs. Uh, and that com comes down to about 25 cents a month for LEDs and about $7 a month to operate the incandescents. If I ran them all night, I run them about 14 hours a day. Here's the schematic of my finished project. I thought I'd show you the overview before we got into some of the details on, on how I actually built it. Uh, but before we even get started with that, uh, let's take a note of caution here. This project uh, deals with potentially lethal voltages, especially over here on this end. These are 120 volt AC coming into the Malibu unit. You're going to be in there working on this thing, so you have to know what you're doing. Keeping it unplugged uh, is a good idea <laughs> before you even open this thing up. So be careful, because uh, these things are lethal if, uh, if you don't know what you're doing. At any rate, this is a look at a, uh, I had a Malibu uh, system, a Malibu uh, low voltage transformer. And the bulk of my system is made up of that. And what I did was modify the Malibu by rectifying the AC that came out of it. It was a 12 volt AC system. And uh, you can see that here, 120 volts comes in one side, is uh, through a step-down transformer, and comes out to 12 volts AC. Now, because I wanted to use LEDs on this project, I knew I wanted to rectify this into DC. And that's done with a full wave or bridge rectifier that looks like this part right here. And in fact, there's a part number for you there. I'll put this schematic up so you can take a screenshot of it uh, uh, in better form on the movie. But that's the full wave rectifier. That's a part I added inside the Malibu, and you'll see that again in a moment. I also added a filter capacitor to smooth out the uh, ripple caused by the rectification of the AC to DC. And everything still comes out the old terminal block on the... that's what's inside this dotted line. That's the terminal block on the back of the existing Malibu. And by the way, this board over here is... Uh, is the control board that has the dust to dawn timer and everything in it. And that's uh, part. Everything's standard Malibu except the addition of these two parts right here. Uh, then on the output, here's what I wound up wiring. I've got 15.9 uh, volts coming out that terminal block now where it was 12 volts AC. It really, uh, once rectified and smoothed out, comes out around 15.9 volts. And I decided because I'm running uh, LEDs, I would need to string five LEDs in series, and because I wanted 10 of them, I did two 5 series uh, LEDs uh, around my house. So I have 10 outside right now, and they're in two groups of 5. So that's how the whole thing looks, and again, I'll put this schematic up on the, so you can take a screenshot of it. Uh, it calls out the part numbers and stuff that, uh, that I used. So that's an overview of the whole system. Let's get into uh, how I went about doing it. We're out here in the garage at the workbench right now, and uh, what you're looking at is my Malibu landscape transformer. This is a 12-volt uh, AC Malibu landscape transformer. Uh, I don't know the exact model here. You can read that. It's 3100-1120-01. Uh, it says 12-volts uh, AC, 120 watts maximum. You notice that I scratched out the AC and made it DC. And that's what uh, this project started with. I wanted to uh, install LEDs for accent lighting on the house, uh, but didn't want to run them with AC for a number of reasons. But first step here was to convert the Malibu into DC. So I pulled the screws off. 
to show the inside. And I'll show you what modifications I've made, and hopefully later I can show you a schematic of, of what was done, because it's very difficult to follow looking at uh, this wiry mess. But what you're looking at there, this is the uh, step-down transformer, 120 volts in and uh, 12 volts AC out. And what I've done is added this rectifier right here. It's a full wave rectifier that turns the AC into DC. And then uh, the other addition down here was this capacitor. It's a 2200 microfarad capacitor that takes that bumpy, uh, bumpy DC after you rectify it and kind of smooths it out to give you uh, a smoother DC signal. But uh, I don't know whether you realize this or not, but 12 volts AC really is almost 17 volts peak to peak. So when you rectify this and smooth it out, you're winding up with a signal that's in uh, up around 16 volts. So I uh, had to be careful with the LEDs to make sure I knew what I was dealing with. I think I'm measuring 15.91 on the output terminals uh, right now with a load on it. So uh, you have to take that into consideration when you're wiring your LEDs. Okay, well that's what the inside looks uh, looks like. Also, uh, by the way, underneath uh, the full wave rectifier, which handles all the current, I took a piece of this old, uh, this is a copper heat sink, and you see I cut a corner out of it about the size of this full wave rectifier, and I put it underneath uh, just in case I was drawing as much as 10 amps. Uh, that thing will heat up pretty good, so I wanted it sitting on a copper uh, heat sink. And I put some uh, heat sink paste on it as well to to conduct the heat away from the device. We're at the workbench again and I wanted to show you the uh, LEDs that I selected for this project. I've uh, never used this type of stuff before, but uh, these are called bead emitters. If I could get a hold of one of these, they are um, quite small. Oop, let me get it in focus here. They're quite small. As you can see, I got a hold of them by the tweezers and they uh, it's supposed to put out three watts. They're incredibly bright for the size of these darn things. But I bought about ten of these for, or I bought exactly ten of them. I think it was just a couple of dollars, something like uh, two dollars and, and change. Uh, but you can't operate these as a component. You can't just wire to that because it'll burn up. It gets so hot, it dissipates so much power. So I also had to purchase some of these. Uh, it's actually a circuit card you can see that or not. It's a piece of aluminum that's stamped out and then they have pasted some sort of a circuit on the top there that, that controls the pluses and the minuses, but uh, it's easy to figure out. So the task then is to solder these beads to the circuit card and that's what I've done here. My soldering isn't the best, but uh, you'll see that I've got that thing attached. And then you wire to the proper pads here. These are, uh, I can't quite read them here. These are, these are negative on this side and they're positive on this side. So polarity is a big deal when you're, when you're working with these things. So those are the parts I did. Then I had to build a, uh, a housing for them and I'll get to that a little bit later. Here is the assembly of my custom LED bead holders that I, I made. Uh, here are the main parts. This is the uh, LED bead uh, mounted on a heat sink, a star they call it. You can see that up close. Now I've wired uh, a black and a red to this and brought it out with uh, oh, about a 10 inch lead. Another part here is uh, the holder. I made this out of uh, 3 quarter inch PVC uh, pipe. But uh, the problem was I had to remount the inside here to 7 eighths of an inch. Uh, reason being is that uh, I've got these lens assemblies that I bought. These were uh, $2.04 for 10 of them, I think, or, or they were less than 30 cents a piece at any rate. This is a 30 degree lens. They're 20 millimeters. I think it's 22 millimeters across. Uh, but they fit perfectly with the uh, LED star that uh, I've made up here. These actually snap right on here if I get it on there the right way. Uh, you'll see it when it goes together, the star and the uh, and the LED lens. Uh, so I had to turn the inside of this down, not turn it down, but ream it out to 7 a so I used just a great big drill and drilled it out. Uh, here's how it goes together. Okay, I put the LED lens in one side 
like so. And then the other side goes the star. And then on the back of this, I needed something to hold it onto my uh, the, the roof line of my house. And I made these bent little pieces of uh, aluminum out of uh, what they call it, step, step uh, flashing that you can buy at Home Depot. It's very thin, and I just cut it because it's kind of springy aluminum. I'm going to mount that on the back using some number two screws that I had to find at uh, Ace Hardware. That was kind of tough to find something that small. But uh, the whole thing goes together, and here's what one looks like. I'm about to put the, the back on it. The front like that all goes together. The uh, star on the back, and they're lined up for the screws. I'm going to put one of these combination heat sink and holder. Actually, I'm going to heat sink this metal flashing to the, the star using some heat sink grease. Uh, I don't know whether this is any good or not. This is GD900. I found it on the internet, and it's uh, heat sink grease. It's very gooey stuff, and get it all over everything. It's awful. Uh, really, the process is to, to uh, get a little bit on a toothpick and smear it around on the back there, on the back of the star. And then, uh, I don't know if you can see any of that. I get a glob in the middle here. I already got some on me. And I'm going to put the heat sink on the back and the, the holder. I'll show you how this works on the eaves of the house uh, a little bit later. All right. The idea here is I line up the screws, tighten the whole thing, and it pulls it all together. Pretty slick. And then I stuff this up uh, in the uh, outside of the aluminum on the, on the house. I'll show you that in a minute. There's what one of those holders looks like already installed up there. Uh, I'm going to get up a little bit closer and you get a uh, close look on how it's put in there. Here we are up close to one of my LED holders. You'll see how it's put in here. The uh, metal flashing is just bent over. And I'm able to stick it up in here and it holds itself. Tuck the wires up side here and all is well works very well no fasteners no nothing it's all held in with friction between this aluminum uh, fascia and, and soffit and here's a shot taken with my iPhone uh, after dark uh, of the house and, uh, and how the whole project looks difficult to take a picture at night but uh, the iPhone did a, a pretty good job and you get the idea of what I, I created with the LED project it's interesting to note that I'm running the LEDs at uh, about 125 milliamps. Uh, that's on a part that's rated to run at a, up to 750 milliamps. Uh, so that's really running at just about one-sixth of the rated power. Now it produced brightness that I felt was adequate, so that's the way I left it. Uh, but if you want more brightness, uh, you can put four LEDs in series instead of the five that I used, and that would produce a, a much brighter output because they'll be running at something like 400 milliamps or about 53 percent of full power. Hope you enjoyed it.